Greetings, survivors and friends. So, what's the one thing that breaks the immersion for you in Rust? That smashes the fourth wall? That latches onto your willing suspension of disbelief with its teeth and tries to turn it into an ocarina? And for a change, I'm not talking about pies or horse riding. Yes, would you believe it? After what seems like 84 years, we finally have fractional reloading. On the staging branch, at least. Yes, this is one of the longest requested features, I think it's safe to say, and I'm not sure exactly what brand of alcohol prompted it to be addressed this week, but it was finally added to the Spaz Pump and Baltic. Of course, reloading only what you need to doesn't just look and feel more realistic, it has gameplay ramifications too. For instance, not having to go through a full reload animation just to top up with one bullet. I guess I don't need to say too much about this, you can figure out the rest, but suffice to say, this one can at long last now be laid to rest. It seems though that somewhere on an old napkin or the back of a sandwich, there's a quality of life list that's currently being worked through, as over the last week a load of other tweaks and fixes have been made. A bug that zoomed weapons in too much if your field of view wasn't set to the default was fixed, and the pumpy also has slightly less zoom. Muzzle brakes now properly apply recoil reduction and reduce damage by 15%. Compound bows now behave just like hunting bows when not charged, with the same rate of fire and damage, plus their cost was reduced and they're now only 25 metal frags instead of 75. Tracers are visible from a longer distance but are only one quarter of the length, and I'm really sorry if this was a favourite pastime of yours, but you can now no longer use weapons when loitering inside deflated hot air balloons and you can no longer see through the canvas. I guess this turns them into a kind of safe zone. Something else I noticed on staging is that in some cases now, arrows won't get stuck floating in midair after the thing they were stuck in gets destroyed. I say in some cases because it seems on investigation that despite also being a long requested fix, this is in fact an unintended consequence of an unrelated change and it also only works if you're near the center of the world. I have no idea why this is and I'm not sure if it'll stay, but it would be rather marvelous if this particular bug's jugular could be seized while it's still pumping. Talking of things not getting stuck in midair, and this is an intended change, player fall physics came under scrutiny this week and now players who disconnect or go to sleep in the air will still fall to the ground and receive an appropriate level of damage. This does of course fix a long running exploit, so commiserations if this was one you enjoyed. Not only, but also wounded players won't magically gain the ability to levitate and will fall to the ground too, and if the block that a player is sleeping on gets destroyed, said player will also come down to earth with a splat, although please note, players will not fall through water. There'll also be a conva for this feature and it is server.player server fall which will be set to true as default. Last week, if you can remember back that far, I mentioned that a new debris system is being added for destroyed building blocks that blocks building in their place for 30 seconds, and this week it's now been extended to also include wall frame inserts and shop fronts. Something that some players have noticed though is that it's possible to make the debris clear faster by using rockets or explosive ammo and thus bypass the 30 second rule. This is apparently not a bug, but a feature and might stay. More attempts to boost performance this week have seen object pooling being added to a number of items including corpses, ragdolls, and a few obscure bits and pieces of clothing such as party hats, scarecrow outfits, wearable barrels, and dragon masks. There are also some player model bone remapping optimizations underway and a number of item descriptions were tidied up. In other changes, code locks can now be stacked up to 10, whoop de doo and it appears that we also have new, slightly grubbier, and more lived-in looking art for the science scientist suits, which brings them up to date and matches in very nice with the new THICK scientists. Just know that everything I've mentioned so far in this video is only live on the staging branch of the game and will hopefully be merged into main with the next patch on the 4th of April. In works in progress, still no new images of the excavator monument I'm afraid, but hopefully there'll be a big reveal of it soon. Last week I showed some images of the lighting rework on the scientist compound. News is that now attention has been turned to giving the same treatment to the bandit camp. Wouldn't want them to get jealous, would we? Apparently, a new oil filter based crafted silencer is in production, but the artwork for this is still being finalized. However, just this morning, it appears that straight out of concept limbo, a brand new knife model slashed its way onto the scene and will be added at some point in the future. Just note that as with the grenade launcher and tier 2 flamethrower models I've shown you previously, there's no definites for when they're going to be in, but I will of course let you know when I know. Please boop the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't done so already and ring the notification bell to maybe 
possibly, if the wind is blowing in the right direction, get a notification of when I upload more tripe to this channel. There is one way of ensuring you'll get notified, and that is to follow me elsewhere too, such as Twitter, Facebook, Discord, and my Steam group. You can also catch me streaming every week on Twitch and support me on Patreon if you would like to. All the links are in the pinned comment. I will, of course, catch you soon, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio!